Good morning, class. It's another fine day here in this beautiful new world of ours, and it's time for a history lesson. <laughs> That's right. Today, we are going to learn about the virus known as A prime flu, or as you kids like to call it, Captain Trips. So, boys and girls, what questions do you have? Where did the virus come from? Great question. A prime flu was developed by the U.S. Army in a top secret facility known as Project Blue. But of course, it's not top secret anymore, is it, boys and girls? Especially since the United States doesn't exist anymore. You might be wondering. Why did the government create a virus that would kill 99.4 percent of its population? Well, most historians believe the military was trying to invent a new biological weapon, and if that's true, they did their job very well. According to classified documents, boys and girls, the virus was accidentally released within Project Blue's complex. In that state, the virus was so strong that within minutes, dozens of military personnel perish. Oh no! I know, so sad. But how did the virus get out? Well, in the event of such a fatal accident, the doors of the facility were meant to automatically lock. However, children, there was a glitch. The doors did shut, but they shut 90 seconds too late. And one army man named Charles Campion abandoned his post like a coward and escaped. Who was Patient Zero? We think of Patient Zero as the first person who died from the virus. The soldier who went AWOL was Patient Zero. That means he was the first person outside of the base to be infected with the virus we know as Captain Trips. As I said before, his name was Charles Campion, and he was a very scared man. And he was also very selfish. If he had stayed at his post and died with his fellow soldiers, we wouldn't have lost 99% of all humans on the planet. And let's not forget all the dogs and guinea pigs too. Why was the virus called Captain Trips? Great question, Molly. No one knows for certain. But historians tell us that Captain Trips is also the nickname of a musician named Jerry Garcia. He was in a rock and roll band called the Grateful Dead, and just as Jerry Garcia traveled around the country, so did the virus. <laughs> the people who followed the man who was nicknamed Captain Trips were known as Deadheads. And the people who caught the virus, Captain Trips, were known as dead. Why did so many people die from the virus? Well, class, we already learned about how Captain Trips was so powerful that some people called it a super flu. When I grow up, I want to be a super flu. I'm sure you do, Billy. But let's think about what it means to be contagious. You see. When Patient Zero left the base, he went to his wife and his daughter and put them in the car. He was trying to save them, but instead they caught the virus from him. Uh oh. Uh oh is right. Charles Campion and his family drove all night long, and as they did, their noses began to run, their throats began to itch, and their tongues began to swell. According to historians, they traveled from California to Texas without stopping or interacting with anyone. By the time they reached the small town of Arnett, the wife and child were dead. Charles Campion was still alive, but just barely. He crashed his car into a gas station. One of the bystanders on the scene was a man you've heard of. 
Stuart Redman. He switched off the gas pumps just in time. A small group of men ran to the car to help patient zero. Each one of those men was exposed to the virus. Stu Redman was one of the very few people to not be affected by Captain Trips, but all of the other men there were. They took the virus home to their families. From there, the virus spread to schools, places of business, beauty salons, libraries, and everywhere else you can possibly think of. And speaking of things to think about, if Stu Redman hadn't flipped the switch on that gas pump, Patient Zero's car would have burst into flames and then the superflu would have been destroyed. I know, I know, children. It's not fair and it's not right, but that's what Stu Redman decided to do. And that's why we have a motto here at the School for the Society of the People. Do you know what that motto is? Mind your own goddamn business. That's right. But Stu Redman was a busybody. And that's why so many people had to die. Well, that's the end of today's lesson, class. It's another beautiful day here in Las Vegas. Time to go run and play. <laughs>